Okay, we're back at it. So we can either put it on the engine stand right now or work on it like this. Once again, I like angling it so I can work on the stuff easily. You can see what's going on. We're going to go ahead and put the cam in here and all the other parts that are not in here right now. So this is our uh, cam drive gear. We don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll find out. Okay, this is the space that goes between the gears. So the oil pump gear is on there right now. Down in here. Spacer goes on between them. Key goes in there. This is on the taper. You tighten it up against the key and you tighten it up. That's what holds it all in there and times it. Okay, we lost a key earlier, so I don't know where it went to. So let's see if I got keys sitting in my junk pile. There we go. So we have keys laying around so you can find them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the key on the shaft in here. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and put the gear on here. Make sure you put it on where the key is. Okay, you should tap it with a steel hammer lightly to seat it. Make sure it's over the key. We put the nut on here. It's a reverse thread, so you got to loosen the tighten. Take a special tool to make it work. It's just a tool I use. It goes right in there like that. And you just tighten it up. So Jim's makes one that's uh, oval. It looks like this. This is uh, one they made years ago, an import version. It holds up better than gems. Gems are don't last as long. This one I've had for uh, 35 years now. Still working. I had to fix it one when a customer destroyed it for me. Yeah, actually, it was another shop that did it, but we're not going to say which one it was. A dumbass don't tighten it up the right way. It's backwards. Should I tighten it the left way? couple wax when it quits moving it's tight so this is a very high torque wrench so it does a good job okay next thing you do is you spin it and you make sure the gear is not wobbling if it's wobbling it's not on there correctly and also making sure the shaft doesn't move either see everything's spinning nice and true just like it's supposed to perfect that's how I like it so, everything's on there like it's supposed to be. Oop. Here we can get to it. Okay, this is the cam we're going to use. It's a hot crane, 310. Nice hot rod grind. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put some oil on things here. We already checked the uh, inflay earlier, so we know it's pretty close to the way it is. We're going to do a little checking here, but we're not going to do real heavy checking. Okay. Basically do a mock-up here. Okay, this is a multiple indexer gear, so we can put it in multiple locations. So basically, the mark for this gear is right here. And the mark you're going to use on this is when the key is straight up, straight up in the air. There's a key and there's keyways with nothing in the keys. So the key straight up is a zero mark. And then we'll use this mark right here where it says zero. That lines up with the one down there. Which keeps moving. Boom. Goes in there just like that. So there's a zero. Lines up right with that mark. And this here's the breather mark would line up over here. That's where you're at. So this keyway is marked zero because it's zero. This one's marked A for advanced. This one's marked R for retard. When you press the gear off and move it to the next key and push the gear back on it, it changes it to 
think it changes five degrees. I forget. It's been a while since I did one of those. Anyway, that's how it goes. We're going to use a time, I mean, um, a reed breather. So we don't have to time it. So it doesn't, it's not, it just sits in the hole. So it makes it simple. All right, so we can go ahead and put that in there. Make sure it lines up. So we open, got instructions to read. It'll tell you it doesn't fit this bike. SNS says 93 and later. I don't care what they say. It works for 36 and later. Knuckleheads on up. Make sure you don't lose the spring. The spring is what holds it in. It's kind of important. Spring goes right in there. That's what puts pressure on it, keeps it from rattling. Basically, just sits in the hole. Boom, done. I'll leave that out until we're done mocking it up. Put it over there where you'll see it. And if I see it there tomorrow and it's still sitting there, I know I gotta pull the motor back apart because I left it out for being a dumbass. So far, I haven't done that yet. I have mocked it up without it being in there and forgot to. I never completed the motor with it. Okay. Use the same gasket we used earlier. We have not duped it up yet. Cam cover is right here. We know the bushings fit, we just don't know how the gear fit is. First problem, guys, they don't want to go together. That's not a good sign. won't even go together, something's wrong. So what are we doing wrong? My guess is we have the wrong cam gear on this thing. Where's the box? That is not the right cam. There it is. Box. There's our problem. Wrong gear. This is for 70, 77. This is 78 and up. There's no ring on this gear. That's the first clue it's wrong. The second clue is the cam cover won't go on it. So that does not work. We get to redo it. So we got to press this cam gear off, put another cam gear on it, the correct one, and then we can put it together. So now I can go find me some gears. Oh, Scooby's back. How are you doing, Scooby? Scooby woke up. Okay, I got hundreds of those crane gears, so let's see how many we've got laying around right now. There should be a couple of them right there. What's up here? Uh, that's early. Those are non-indexable gears. They don't have no keyways in them. So here's, here's some gears. And they make these gears in different sizes too, which makes it interesting. So we don't know which one we need. And they're not marked. All you do is put them together and see what happens. You see how they got the ring gear, or the ring around the gear here? That is the identification for being a late gear. Okay, so these are all of the numbers. any kind of identification that matters. I don't recall it being anything that tells you a sizing. It just says 1B on it, 1B, 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 yet when you measure them, everyone's different. All right, I like this one, it's clean. I'm gonna use this one. 
Okay, so we've got to press off the gear, press on this one. Let's see how it works. Well, I know things are going too smooth. I've been having a lot of problem with cam gear fitment in the last few motors. And we're right there again. Cam gear fitment issues. All right, let's go over to press and do a little pressing situation. Uh, it's only 1.30. Yeah, it's early. I got all day to work on this motor still. We're getting a fresh start on the day around here. We go from midnight until we go home. Eh, tripod. All right, so it's right there. It goes right there. Go on top. You didn't mark it before you pulled it. Uh oh. Maybe that one had a green dot on it. This one has no dot on it. Good for it. Okay, see so how's the key right here? And we got our three marks again zero, advanced, or retard. Line up the key right there. We're going to go into zero, straight up position. This is indexable, so like I said, if you want to change it, you can get a little more low end by putting A or you can go to more top end with an R for retard. Or race. Maybe that's for race. Okay, so we just push it right back in. We now have a late gear cam instead of an early cam. Didn't take much. There's Scooby sleeping over there. What are you doing, Scooby? Are you sleeping? He misses me. He's a big baby. Okay, so this isn't going to work for anything anymore. So I'm going to put this back in the box so we won't lose it. Now, in case we need a gear, we'll have one. Boom. Okay, so now we have a cam that might fit in, might not. And now the e in play probably did not change because most of these gears are pretty much identical. So I'm not worried about that part of it too much, but we obviously will be checking that. The next thing is the gear fitment on the teeth. This is where the fun starts, figuring out gear fitment. Okay, we gotta line up our gear again. Okay, we're on the A. Let's see, we're on the zero, straight across. Looks good. Okay, before this one fit, remember? That's a good sign. Boom, goes right on. It's a lot better sign than we had before. Now, if you run the gears too tight, obviously it doesn't fit. You break the cover beating it on. Now, if you had the two small gears on there, then it would make all kinds of noise. Sound like the whole motor's coming apart. So, I had a couple customers come around here like that. Uh, Diagnostic cam gear being wrong. I tell them, take it apart and fix it. They take it apart and go, yep, that was a problem. That's because I've had that problem before. So when it sounds like it's really like a concrete grinder, it's a new motor, that's probably the problem. Especially if it's just been worked on recently. So I'm cutting. Torque. 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 Okay. If 
The cam moves side to side easily. And then we know the teeth are not too tight. If I can't move it, it's too tight. Okay, I can move it easily. Going like this back and forth. So we have in play, that's a plus, and we have backlash clearance on the teeth. Okay, now I'm going to push the teeth like this back and forth and see if I get any noise. If I get noise, it's too, lo too loose. Feels good. Rotate it a little bit, check it again. Hear that noise? That one, tight, a little bit of noise, a little bit of noise, a little bit more noise, no noise there, tape put, barely anything. Barely. Okay. So I think it's just about right. It's not tight, so it won't whine. It's barely got any clearance on it, so that means that if you make one that's no clearance right now, they will whine and make all kinds of noise. You want to have a little bit of backlash in the teeth, not a lot, just a little bit. If it had a lot of backlash, you will be going click, 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 real loud. So I think we're pretty good. Okay, the employee seems to be good on it. Got plenty. So I think it's a work. So we lucked out. It's an easy job. So I guessed correctly, see? I can just as easy guess the other way. I think if you tighten it up one thousandths, it probably would be too tight on the spot where I couldn't get any clearance, and that would cause problems down the road. It would probably make noise. Okay, so. So now, we should be able to put this together. I think this is the quickest cam cover install I've done in five motors. No lapping. Just a quick cam slot. That's quick. Didn't have to degree anything in. Nice. Get your washer. Can you get cam cover? I just lift the cam up a little bit. Easy pops the cam cover if it's on there. Pretty good. There it goes. If everything slips on nicely, it comes off. If it's binding up, it won't come off that way. Okay, we're going to reuse that seal because it was a good seal. As far as I could tell, it was the tension on it was good. We tore it apart. I don't remember there being any leaks in there, so it should be good. Okay. So now we're going to just lubricate this thing up. Put it together. Let's see. I'm going to blow on this gear a little bit just in case there's any dirt or anything on it. Ah. All right. Just in case there's any lint or anything on that gear. Okay, so I lubricate each lobe. I only care about the top of the lobe, not the, the heel. Okay, then we lubricate the gear itself all the way around. Now the teeth are lubed. Put a little bit of oil right here because we already have it on and off. There we go. That's a lubricated cam. I didn't even get my fingers dirty yet. Okay, where's our mark at? Advanced. Zero. Okay, and we missed it by two teeth. One tooth, two teeth. Okay, so we're on zero. <clears throat> Put some oil in here where the spring goes. Ok, 
Okay, so there's our mark going away right now. So put it right back over there. See zero lines up. Make sure you got a restrictor into the shaft on most shafts, it does. And then we had a little springy dingy sitting right over here. I put a little bit of oil right there to hold it. So that'll hold it. Okay, if you don't have a restrictor in there, most aftermarket shafts have restrictors. <clears throat> it helps build oil pressure in the motor because the crank will suck every ounce of oil that motor puts out of that pump. They are oil hogs. The centrifugal action of flywheel actually slings, it sucks the oil out of the pump. It'll just suck it dry and nothing will go your top end. Okay, so we have nothing in here. That's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. So I just need to put a little lube on these two parts. Lubricate the gasket and put it together. Simple. Now the van's being laid like that, nothing's going to fall out. <laughs> Everything stays put where it belongs. Okay. Make sure the uh, oil seal's got oil on it. Very important, you don't like to run dry. It's hard to get much oil on the pressure bu in the bushing in here, we just do what you can. Okay, that's ready to go together. Okay, the gasket, we're supposed to lubricate this with oil, remember? So I'm going to put oil on my thumb, forefinger. Time to make a mess. Messier than oil and sealer is. Okay, it's all lubed up. I'm all lubed up too. So we have to do some lubing. Get my fingers off. Okay, so now this should all slip right on there. Right down, that's good, no binding. If it was binding, you cannot do that. It's always a good sign. Okay, so you always want to make sure you have these little AN washers on your bolts. Allen's. These are special ones, they're thinner than a normal AN washer would be. She has a regular washer on here. It's a little bit bigger diameter than this one. It's also a lot thinner too. I don't always get this little thin one on there for, but he did. I'm gonna put that right in that corner. Two over there. The two little short ones go over here. He's got another thin washer here. It's even bigger. See, that's a regular hand washer. See how big it is? Put that right there in the corner right there. <coughs> You must have a little bit of oil on the threads, they're not squeaking anymore. If 
She didn't work, but that was on there like that. Oh, forgot this bolt. Okay. Leave that out. Okay. So I'm going to torque with my torque wrench right here. Torque the first time. Now we'll come back and give it a good squeeze here. Is that one, two. Shatter it a little bit. Is that one, that one, and that one. All right, those are all torque. Cam still free. And make sure the motor turns over freely. Very important that all this stuff turns over freely. There you go. And make sure you go the direction of rotation. Sometimes they rotate one way and not the other. We don't care about backwards, we only care about forward. Appears to be good. Okay, while you're in here, you want to make sure that you got the washer on the right side up, which means the flat side is on this side, not on this side. See how it's round, see how it's flat, that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, so now we got that all done. So now is a good time to put on the stand or just keep working. Doesn't really matter. Either or works. These are our lifter blocks right here. And we got our fancy lifters down here. These are the old original Sifton lifters. These are not Taiwan Teddy Sifton, these are the real Sifton. I've had these for 30 years. Last set. These have the Evo style push rod back when that was something different. Look all our hardware out. The hardware's right here. There's our chrome. Box. All right, so that's ready to put these on, on the motor here. So these are four mat gaskets. We got the metal going down through these, and it's got that foamy material on the outside. <clears throat> so, and they're not the same one. See the front and the back. See it's going dry, <clears throat> and they're semi reusable, but eh, comes and go on that part. Now these have a kind of a slimy material to them, so I don't have to really coat them. He's gonna probably want me to do that anyway, but all right. So these we gotta make sure these get well lubricated. So we're gonna get oil inside the roller here. So what I do is I just pour it on in here like this. Let me flip it over and do the other side. Get the oil worked into them. You guys are dry. And the other one.
a little gritty gritty here in the places right there I can feel it we were having a problem with these being locked up originally but it's nice and smooth this way but this way you can feel a little gritty gritty if I lift it up if I can still feel it I lift it up, I don't feel it. So it must be uh, some rough spots here on the side of the body. Stuff that has to wear in, I guess. Sounds good. Uh, getting a oil in there, I guess. Yeah. Some more oil in there. Lift up, there's no drag. Push it down. You can feel the roughness, so it's gonna be something dragging on the inside of the fork in there, I guess. It'll be alright. We'll put those two in the very front. <clears throat> alright, so now I gotta lube up the block itself. Once again, this stuff's all splash lubricated, so you don't want to make sure that you got oil inside of these things. I'm going to go all the way up so you get it from both sides. Sharp, too. There's grooves in there, eat your fingers up. I try to. Grabs a hold of them. They're sharp. Okay, that's lubed. Which one is this? This is the front one. Put these two blocks in there. You lubricate the body like that. See how it's got oil on it now? Put it all the way down, no problem. No binding, that's good. There's the gasket here. I'm going to flood these with oil because they're pretty slimy. So they got a material that's not supposed to really get too wet. Okay, there's that one. That's our front one. Lay it in there. Blocks are kind of loose in the, ball, in the body for some reason. Harley uh, production air, I guess. That is sharp. Sharp edges. Yeah, that one's lubed. Ah. Go. 
go. You keep trying to cut me. Things are sharp. Okay, that goes in good. All right, he'll be happy. Nice and gooey. Okay, make sure you put the gasket in the correct direction so the hole lines up. Kind of important. And I'm all full of goo. For me and a table are full of goo. more do. Okay, if you go quick, things assemble up and don't drag. Lifters will stay put. There we go. Back down the area. Okay. parts. Eight bolts, eight holes. Move them around to get the bolts to line up. See it. That one drop in. We're hitting on the nut over here, so it's not letting it drop in. Nope. Okay. There's no clearance in here for the, letting the lifter block in, so I get to unscrew this to get it out. Still won't let it in there. Okay. Looks like the lock washers was binding. If you push the stud out as you rotate it with an zip gun, it should come out. Nope. I'm going to have to just tap it out. Okay. Stud's 
stubborn. Bring them down to where they just touch and then back them off so you can rotate them. Okay, lifter blocks all have clearances in them. So, what I do is I just center up my clearances from one extreme to the other and I tighten them down. I'm using all four bolts as an alignment. If you put that little taper pin in the other ones here, you're only lining off. The threads in the case and the holes in the lifter block. And I've had them things way the hell off before. So if you're using all four, it's a more accurate dimension. This one basically doesn't even want to move, barely even move at all. No, that's because I wasn't in on this side. That's why. Still got not a lot of clearance in there, but a little bit. Kind of center it. Torque it in. You can eyeball it pretty close. It doesn't really matter anyway. It's a roller lifter, it'll figure out what it wants to do anyway. The problem with doing this like this is threaded holes are not made for doweling off of. They're made for holding bolt in. They're not precision. You got a loose thread and a loose taper and it's just fluctuating all over the place. Very bad design. If it really mattered if these things were straight, they would have dowel pins on the damn things. So don't get too carried away about it. If it goes together, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Oh. I guess it wasn't quite in the bottom of the hole. Just give it an initial torque. Kind of a star pattern on these. Okay, then after you get an initial torque, then you go ahead and torque the piss out of them. Tight. 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 There we go. Those are going to loosen up, you have to retorque them. Oh well, get tight for now. Okay, now we can go find out what's going on with this. Okay, that obviously fits. This lock washer might not fit. It does now. Looks like the problem was the block wasn't all the way in the case. Is why it wouldn't work. Okay, now it's going. But you probably have to have this off to get the block in there because it's on top of it, the block. Okay, so now we're just going to hold that there. We'll hold everything where we want it to be. Torque it again. Initial torque. We're going to have to fine tune this later. Okay, so. Take care of that. And the last thing you want to do is rotate the motor and make sure the lifters go up and down. They go up and then obviously they drop down gravity. If it didn't go clump, it's not a good sign. If they don't drop down pretty freely, that's another problem. They're going down real slow, but they are going down. Sometimes when you tighten the lifter blocks down and the case and stuff or the lifter block or something's not flat and it twists and warps and then the uh, lifters will get tight and bind up. So you always want to make sure they work freely. So they're dropping down. They got thick oil on but they drop down real slow. So you are going down. So that's very important that uh, they do that. So you can watch them here how they go. These ones do a little bit better up here in the front. Down, but it's still going down slow. The back ones, same thing. 
They are dropping slowly. But they are dropping. All right. So everything's now complete, except for this isn't open right now, which is bad. All right, so all this is all on there. Everything's good to go. So we need to put a timing plug in here so we don't lose it. Get dirt in there. Oh, here's the, uh, here's the piece here that goes in here. Now that the lifter block is in there, we go ahead and put this in there. So make sure there's no ring on it. It appears to be there. Do with one hand, but you have to push down and rotate at the same time without binding. There we go. It's just like the fork to be pushed down and rotate together. It takes it off of it because you got spring tension on it. And one more time, I guess. It's starting to get tight right there. You might have to retwerk this here. Who knows? Okay, where's my timing hole plug at? Got a cylinder base nut. There it is. Okay, looks like he put an O-ring on there, which I don't agree with. And three bond. He really wanted that thing not to leak. See, the case they're not made to have an O-ring stuffed in there. They're made to be metal on metal. So once again, you put a piece of crap rubber between something that's supposed to be hard and it will leak and come loose and fall out and have all kinds of problems. It's not how you do things. Oop, that's not the correct one. Got my ass pulled out the wrong socket. I should know better than that. See how the rubber goes in there? I can just keep torquing this thing. It's going to Push it right out of there. So I don't put them stupid ass O rings in there. I've had customers lose plugs like doing this crap like this. It's loose, it's not tight. And you got a piece of rubber in there. I don't care what your excuse is. It's not in there all the way. Put it like that. If everything is flat and you torque it down, it's sealed. If you want to put a little sealer on the end of it to seal it, then do that. But tighten the damn thing down. Tighten it down. Not super tight, but tight. Okay, this one over here. It's tight. This is I aim slightly backwards right now, which is probably not where it was before, because I tightened it down pretty good. So what you can do is you can kind of cheat a little bit. You don't want to go on there. And it's loose enough you can move it around. This thing is not very tight. See how it moves around? So I don't like that being like that either. Probably get pissed off by spun another turn around. <laughs> It'll be tight then. You don't tighten your stuff down, it comes loose and leaks. Okay, so I don't know exactly what he wants that to be, so he's got a gauge on here. So now it's tight. It wasn't tight before, it's tight now. It's tapered pipe thread. You're supposed to tighten it to make it seal. So I don't know if he wants to gauge out here, he wants to straight back. So my guess is he's gonna want it somewhere like over in this area. So I'll let him make that decision. It's at least it's on there now. Here's the gauge he was using. So depends on where you want to have it. You know, the rest of the bike kind of dictates where things like this goes. So I'm going to leave this off for now so it doesn't get damaged. Let the owner decide what he wants to do with that. I don't know where it's going to go. It's going to go someplace, so. I'm going to put four brand new O-rings here and here. 
I usually put them in now so they don't get lost. There's also oil in there right now so it holds them down. You can even put a quad seal in there or an O-ring so the O-rings work good too. They both work. I've had everything leak and I've had everything not leak so it doesn't matter which ones you use. They work when they want to. Okay, so we got an ignition still to deal with over here. It goes in here. So he has a, one of these fancy stainless weight things here. And this is a, need magnets are in this thing. I think there's only one magnet. The magnet right here. Nope, there's another one right there. It's got two magnets on it. So it fires twice. So this is a dual fire. So what we need to do is put some good grease on here so this thing won't wear out. He wants to keep this stuff on here. So the best thing to put on this for grease is the tribodyne because it'll hold up. So we'll put our tribodyne grease on here. We'll pull these springs off. Come out of there. There it goes. These pop up. He says it's a really good unit. See, there's not a drop of lubrication in here. And you can see all the gall marks on there because there's no lube on it. It's actually got a little bit of rust in there. So, rust is not a very good lubricant. It's usually kind of abrasive. come off either. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put some Trabodyne on there. Nice heavy graphite gray grease with other fancy stuff in it too. Put some of that on there so that'll lubricate that one. Put a heavy load of it on there. And I'm also going to lubricate the shaft here so it'll be well lubed. make it more sticky too if I want to work now. It's all right. Probably about 10 bucks worth of grease I just put on there. Okay, so what I do is I put these on here like this over here. Get them lubricated up pretty good and I flip them around. Put them on the correct spot. Same thing with this one. around do it the right way. Okay, you rotate the spring around and engage it. That one's not quite in there all the way yet. So just reach in here and push it down with a screwdriver. Now that one's in. Same thing on this side. One was a little bit tighter than the other, so this must be the tighter of the two. And that didn't work. Stretching these springs enough to go in this way, but I 
Yep, not going in. I get in between. Got in there that time. Forced it in. Got a good positive return, that's good. Nice heavy duty springs. Stock ones, they barely even go back at all. That's why they don't work very well. They won't idle down. Okay, there's a dowel pin in there that has to line up with that, so you know this is timed correctly. See, see how it doesn't go all the way down when you, when you have it wrong? When you have it right, it goes all the way down, see? So, you know, this is plastic, but it's, it's actually aluminum, I think. Coated aluminum. All right, so that one's all rebuilt. So that just goes on top of those cams now out there. Boom. Pops on, good to go. Boy, that thing is loose. Jeez, how can that time with the squat? Look how loose that is. What the hell is that supposed to do? Jeez, talk about fluctuation, RPM. Let's give or take a few degrees of air there, what do you think? What a piece of junk that is. wonder who made that one. Something's not standard size. All right, so there's a bolt that holds that in there. I don't know where it's at. Somewhere. Be nice if it was in a box over here. It'd be nice, but it's not here. Oh, there it is. Found it. Okay. And this is what I never understand. Why do you put a lock washer? Too damn low. You put a star washer underneath the head here, and that's right where it rubs against the damn thing over here and makes it lock up. Now this one's got enough end play, it probably wouldn't matter. I never did understand that. If you tighten the damn thing down, it doesn't come off. So if he wants to put a lock washer on, he can do it himself. I'm not doing it. Okay, that didn't want to screw in because it was cross-threaded. I backed up and went click, and then it went in freely. Okay, now you got to torque that down, but not strip it or break it. I have a special 916 socket quarter drive to do that with. You have to judgment call on how torque to do this. About that much is all I want to go. Okay, make sure it's nice and free. It's good and free. Look at that. Look how bad that thing is. Jeez, that thing is horrible. I don't know how you get any kind of accuracy out of that. That is just stupid loose. That's a pile of crap. I've never seen one do that before. Maybe some kind of an import copy of a Dyna ignition. They do make a copy of one. That thing's a piece of crap. Uh, let's see, the module's still on the bike, I think, or in the back. Yeah, it's down here. Yeah, that's, that thing's a piece of crap. I told him to put electronic in here, but he liked this old one. That thing's horrible. Yeah, we'll see what he thinks of this. That thing's terrible. Okay, now we want to rotate it and make sure it spins correctly. Make sure it's not wobbling. Looks like it's going evenly to me. All right. So that is it for the lower end. It is now rebuilt, so now it's time to put a top end on it, which is laying right there. And what time is it right now? It's only 2 a.m. We're going quickly. All right, so now I need to do this. Scooby's over there sleeping too, look at that. Look at that dog. Uh-oh, 
his eyes open. He's happy. Okay, so like I said, this is a good time to put up on the stand now. stand just like in the frame the motor always goes in from the right because the oil pump gets in the way of the motor mount going across and it hits so you always have to come in from the, from the right side toward the left there it goes. a little bit high there make sure you put your bolt on the stand otherwise it could fall off which Get you kind of excited, maybe. Customers easy to like when the motor falls off the engine stand while you're moving them around. They tend not to like that for some reason. You don't have to tighten them; just bring them up until they hit. Stand. Now we can rotate it really quick now, see? There you go. Alright, that's it for now. Let me get ready for the top end.